Right now, to you know, your right hand side up there, that's the ruins of some houses was built on the top of the temple, you know, because the temple already used to be covered 39 feet, you know, 12 meters. That's why what is could appear from the temple just the top of the pile, that's why it's protected. It's one of the reasons, okay, that makes sense. No, so would that be natural buildup of silt, like sediment from the river? Did that over years? Yeah, the what? This? No, the, 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 build, the 12 meters of. Ah yes, that's uh, because of uh, the sandstorms, like blowing the sand from the desert, and even because of the silt, you know, and the soil that coming from the Nile River. I guess it had. Thousands of years to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. After uh, Karnak temples, and the second largest pile in all over Egypt, after the one in Karnak. Is that correct? The vault to that side, vault there, represented about yes. the Lala Egypt. Yeah, upper and lower Egypt. It's probably the nicest facade in all these Egypt, this one. Okay, so uh, right now, uh, Edfu Temple, so uh, we considered, as we mentioned, one of uh, like the most preserved temples all over Egypt. Uh, why? For more than reason. First one, it's built a bit far from the harbor of the Nile River. That's why we came to the, so it was a horse carriage, because already we built a bit far from the harbor of the Nile River. Second, it's already, it still contains a big part of the mud wall that used to, so, you know, surround the whole temple to preserve it. Another reason, that temple used to be covered. Like, as we said, 39 feet, like 12 meters. But so imagine 12 meters, just what is appeared from the temple, like the top of the pylons. Okay? <laughs> Until it's been found by a French Egyptologist, then we uncover it like in uh, so around like 18 so 1980. Uh, so they start to uncover the temple, that's why that's the reason why it's just, like became like one of the most good example to give you an idea about what is the temple consisted of, and you see the details of the temple. Uh, that's why already, do you know, like they used to build houses as a see ruins, even when, like at the top here, you know, your way out, you could see here behind you, there is some houses already was built on the top of the temple because the temple originally used to be covered. That's why the people used to build houses on the top of the temple, unless they start moving, remove those houses and start to, the, you know, the idea for uncovered the whole temple. Uh, over there, you will see more of the mud behind the wall. That's where Renji, like one of the people asked me yesterday, if the priestess used to live inside the temple. 
no they cannot live inside the temple why because once you live in in a, in a place you have to cook you have to do a bathroom and does not allow to be in the temple that's why they have houses next to the temple that's why they live beside the temple but not inside they comes for the you know for the daily ritual the daily ceremony the daily praying but you know they go back already it for it comes out of uh, an, you know uh, an ancient word called the depot which is means like okay the victory because of what the story is about the or the legend about the fighting between two brothers not Cain and Evil, but two different names. Osiris and Set. Osiris, he was a good guy. He was in a power. So Set, his brother, he was jealous about the power and and you know of his brother, you know Osiris. And even he got the beautiful wife Isis. That's why he was jealous. That's why his idea is to kill his brother. That's why he at the beginning he created a coffin made out of solid gold inlaid by semi-precious stones and diamonds and who said who will fit into the coffin will take it as a gift i know if i give you a gift as a coffin nowadays that's a bad thing but according <laughs> to the ancient mythology that's i think the best of what you can do so he made that for sure he made the coffin according to the size of his brother so let any everybody try to get in no okay now osiris this is your turn he get into the coffin so set he sealed it off and he threw it in an iron river <laughs> So who never gave up on her husband, the beautiful wife, Isis, goddess of, you know, justice, magic, and, you know, beauty. She started, like, try to find out the body unless the, the story said she found the body nearby Jordan. She brought the body back, okay? But then said he said he fine, what I did wasn't a real punishment. He came back. That's why he knows that you know, he's still weak out of being in a coffin for a long time. That's why his idea, he, so he steal the body and he decided to kill his brother and divided his body into 14 pieces. And he put each piece in different parts of Egypt. Seems like, okay, no way for him to come back. Isis, she never gave up on, on her husband. She never gave up on her husband. She tried to collect the body, but she needs more magic. She went to her sister, Neftis. By them both magic, they collect the body and they done mummification and they doing resurrection. But let's see, they collect the body except one piece. Okay? Uh, they tried to make the resurrection of Osiris. They couldn't. Why? He was already gave up from the jealous of his brother. That's why he turned himself to be the god of the afterlife, paradise, leader of the underworld. But because they will buy the magic, they won't keep trying to make the resurrection. They could make the resurrection for him for only one night. Okay? That's why Isis, she knows now my husband gave up. She don't want to give up. She want to make the revenge. That's why her idea to have a baby and the baby will be Horus, God of the protection, will start to make the revenge. But could you tell me how come she gonna have a baby and her husband lost his part because this is the missing piece? <laughs> Hold on, spiritual God can do anything. She got pregnant by the God Horus, God of the protection. That's why I will say one little thing. This is the reason even Christianity flows to Egypt with no fight. Why? Because already when you think about the idea of Virgin Mary and Jesus Christ, Egyptians ask, why, so how is Virgin Mary she got pregnant by Jesus Christ? Okay, spiritual God can do anything. They said, okay, your story is very similar to my goddess Isis of Virgin Mary. Your story of Jesus Christ familiar for me for Horus, the god of the protection. That's why they find it seems not a new thing. It seems like a resurrection of the ancient religion itself. Okay. Uh, that's why, you know, God Horus, he started to, you know, he was, all, he was still a baby. That's why Isis, she wo worry about him. That's why she was trying to hide him a lot in different places unless she got the idea to pass him to a greatest goddess. Her name is Hathor. She gonna look after that baby Horus. She took him to the Nile Delta, hide him by the papyrus plants, you know, and she start to feed him unless he gets old and she start, she start to prepare him to make the revenge of his father. Uh, that's why they was to spend a long time together. They fell in love together. So Horus and, and Hathor and they got married, you know, 
and we have a, a one of the festival here we will explain it it's called themas by the beautiful meeting you know or celebrating the wedding you know or you know the anniversary okay that's why anyway you know she he gets older he starts to fight his uncle set during the fight the fight was way strong that's why he lost one of his eyes he lost, he lost the left eye that's why as we mentioned before eye itself became one of symbol of protection to protect from evil eye keeps eye, evil eye away and also symbol of healing as we mentioned about ramses the third priestess used to put it over the neck to heal that part because it's been assassinated okay that's why by the x-ray we seen they put the symbol of the eye of horus over the neck by the way so the fight was very strong but where horus he could make the control on set here you know that's why here they're celebrating that victory we will see the scenes of that legend you know from the outer wall of the temple uh, right now the temple itself is back to ptolemy era it started by ptolemy the third ends by the one you can see the scene of him in front of you ptolemy the 12 is number 12 okay that's why because as we said the temple starting from inside to outside that's why the scenes here to your right and left hand side follow me the, so the number 12 when is like catch the enemy same idea from the hair to punish them in front of the god horus the legend of the temple you know and uh, behind him his wife no his mother you know isis some people they ask how we know the difference between isis and hathor while some of the both of them sometimes has the same you know uh, idea woman with two horn and a son between them okay uh, second rule to your left hand side okay that the pharaoh start to give offers for horus you know and uh, and hathor his wife and then another two horus horus the young and another one rahur Akhti. but if you move a little bit you got the Pharaoh as well offering the double crowns of upper and lower to Horus and behind him woman with two <coughs> horns and the sun between them but there is a symbol of a throne open the head that's Isis Isis she's the mother of Horus Horus the god of the protection every Pharaoh represented Horus on the earth protector of the earth that's why Isis she's the holder of the throne of the pharaoh that's why whenever you find the throne that means isis without the throne that will be at home okay that will be so easy for everybody to understand so the temple we start to build it to 137 BC and it's been done or finished 57 BC so it took 180 years to build this temple which is amazing temple because being covered and survived that's why it's amazing to give us a lot of uh, details yes. This is the, like over here, right in front. This is the enemy. That's why imagine how he's just very strong. He catch all of those people in one hand from the hair. That's like a propaganda for the Pharaoh. But let's see. Uh, some in some how in some temples, uh, Pharaohs they put like scenes of uh, fighting. Why? Because he's already Egyptian. That's why he's fighting enemies. But the Ptolemies, they're not gonna put scenes for battles or campaigns. Why? Because they are not Egyptian already. If they're gonna put enemies, the enemies will be the Egyptian themselves. <laughs> That's why, anyway, here, it's just a propaganda for, you know, as following the pharaohs, like holding the enemies, not Egyptian, as we mentioned, you know, uh, hold them from the hair, smash them right in front of the legion of the temple, hold us, you know, Yes, 
I will, you know, as we said, let's say here, the the whole so the, the human body was head of, of the falcon with the double crowns of upper, upper and lower, that will be Horus. Horus, the older, or known as Horus, Behdeti, or Horus Itzli. It's the man, the one is control set, control the evil. Behind him here, without the throne over the, over the sun desk, that's his wife, Hathor. Okay, but with, there is a little throne will be over the head, over the top here. That will be Isis, his mother. Yes. Explain the jackal headed staff. That's what we often say. We say it in the tombs as well. This is the jackal headed staff he's holding. Yeah. This is Horus. Horus? Uh, this one is called Was Was, symbol of power. Was Was. Like uh, we see, let's say. Um, we have three symbols that have been repeated so many times. Was the end, was the power, and the life which rejected power, this stability here. You see? That's was, that's power, and this is and life. Okay? Then you get the jet color, the stability. One of the most important festival happened in that temple, you know, the, we call it the beautiful meeting. Or some people said, like the Valentine or the anniversary, so celebrating the wedding. Okay, we said the real mother of Horus is Isis, but the one looked after him when he was so young and prepared him to make the revenge hot work. That's why. You know, as we said, they fell in love together, you know. But her temple where? Is in Dandara, in a city called Kena, like let's say 100 kilometers to the north of Luxor. So right now we are even the south of Luxor. That's why every year, the beautiful wife, she come out from her temple, sails to the south to come to meet her husband here. That's why the husband, you know, he's just waiting in the temple. No, the temple is a bit far from the harbor of the Nile River. He goes waiting by the harbor of the Nile River, waiting for his beautiful wife. That's why then they met together. They come, they spend a week here. Then they go back, you know, and join her back to the Nile River. Then she start to sail back to her temple. That's why you start to see. By the way, the beginning of, you know, of the sailing, you know, it exists, by the way, on the two walls, you know, when already she's sailing to the south, already the Nile River floats from south to north, that would be opposite direction, okay, that's why they open the sail to help for the sailing, and you see they use oars, but in the way back, already she's flows in the same way of the current of the Nile River, that's why they flew with no you know, sail and you know, that's why you will see a difference of sailing without and sailing with, you know, and these oars. You see that guys? Okay, so that's why that means way and way coming to the temple and the trip way back. The priest is holding the two holy parts of the two gods of here, the legend of the Itfu temple, Horus, you know, here is Hathor, the woman is the two horn of the cow and the sun between them. So that's why this is one of the most important festival happen here, you know, uh, of what we know it by the beautiful meeting, the meeting between the husband and the wife, celebrating their marriage, you know, spend a week together, you know, that's why this is like one of the main festival happen in this temple you know the beautiful meeting some people they ask me about the empty cartouches they said why well, this one doesn't has a name in okay during the Ptolemy time as you know some of the Ptolemies they're not a stay for a long time in a, in, in a power that's why the priestess they got an idea if we keep carving names is he, he hard to remove this that's why they make an empty cartouche and they go for painting the name. That's why easy to remove the painting and put a new name 
for the next Pharaoh. That's why you see they put just the titles and like here Sarah as we mentioned and they left the cartouches empty to be easy, just painting the details on you know the uh, inside of the cartouche. Okay, please. So right now uh, this is the open courtyard again to remember remind you every time outside the commoners, the commoners they cannot step inside the temple, then we stand in front of the pilot. Then comes open courtyard, you know that's for nobles, rich people. They can pay, give more offers, that's why they can step inside the building. But hold on, it still has to be open courtyard. Why? If not, they don't have a reason connection with the guard. Right why? They are already you know uh you know okay rich people but they are not uh, you know part of royal blood that's why they are not related to the pharaoh that's why they don't have a connection in the blood with the fear with the with the pharaoh it mean with the god that's why they still has to see the sky then we move by hypostyle hall hall contains columns to carry ceiling covered that for who for priests because priests they have a part of royal blood that's why for sure they have a real connection with the God so they don't have to see the sky because they have a connection with the God in the blood. There is uh, like two uh, beautiful uh, statues of Horus right here. So, uh, no, no. That's the sun this, surrounded by Topra and the wings of Horus. No, wings of the falcon image of Ra, Hur, Akhti. Ra Horus, rise up with Ra in the heavens. So guys, Ra is God Ra, Hur is Horus, Akhti, it means horizon. So Horus, rise up with Ra in the horizon. Why that? We will explain this, but if you want to say it. Uh, Horus the younger, Ra Harakti. Uh, no, Ra Horus the younger is Four, 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 one of the four in the one, one of the four of the Canada. Last time we got a group here. Yeah, that made some picture last time. Oh, ah, yes. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, last two group we got a group photo together with uh, the legend of the temple Horus. But I think we'll be waiting for a long line there. So, we can do it in our way out. So By the way, guys, any entrance you will pass with it, small, big, huge in a temple, has to be decorated by sun disk with the wings of the falcon. Okay, look, it's right there. Yeah. Okay, it's, you know, in the main entrance, yeah, from good. inside and outside. Okay, another idea, a small one, look, look over here. Sun disc with the wings. So the sun disc with the wings here, over the sun, you know, with the wings. I mean, any entrance has been decorated by that image. Why? Ancient Egyptian, as we mentioned, they believe gods look like human. So what I mean, sometimes they have, you know, the, uh, some man has a wife, sometimes they have children. Sometimes it gets old. The story goes for when the god Horus, sorry, god Ra, the sun god, start to become old. The bad people start to kidding about him. Ah, Ra, now he gets old. You cannot rise so high in the heavens and the horizon. So that's why, you know, who is already get super angry? Sekhmet, the goddess of the war, and she's gonna to destroy all of the humans. But then Ma'at, goddess of justice, she said, hold on, not all of the humans are bad. You know, I mean, destroying the whole humans, that's a weird idea. That's why Horus, he said, okay, stop, I can fix that problem. So he starts to carry Ra behind his back, which his image is the sun desk, and then fly so far in the heaven, that's why the god Ra would love to thank Horus about what he did, give an order to decorate the whole entrance with 
the combination between both of them would be named after that Ra Hur Akhti. Ra was Horus in the, in the horizon. Okay, that's why that's the reason why you get to see all of the entrants are decorated by that image, but there is a difference for the so the uh, so the sun disk with the wings and the scarab is behind you. Who's asking for the scarab? The scarab is right here. Ah, okay, okay, yes, you okay. got it. Yeah. I mean, there's not a scarab, no, that sun disk surrounded by the uh, because do you know why some people they ask me, okay, why? They choose the falcon to be the god Horus, god of the protection. Why do you choose the image of the falcon? By the way, the falcon, the only kind of bird, can fly so far in the heaven. They have very sharp eyes. That's why they are so far. Sharp eyes, it means they can cover a big part of the land. Fastest bird to close down. That's why he's the god up there, you know, watching, watching us. He's the fastest one come to come to protect us, you know, and save us from any problem. That's why, you know, this is the reason why they choose the image of God Horus to be a falcon. Because he's the only one can fly far, far, far farther than any other birds. Very sharp eyes cover a big, huge part of the land. Very fast to get close down. Right now, uh, there is two rooms here. This one here, you see the symbol? Symbol of what? Of the papyrus rule. That's why that used to be what? Library of the temple. You know, to contain the most important record. The other room right there, you see it? You see my laser? Oh. This other room, it's similar, familiar to this one. This is used already for to keep the priest's stuff. Like they use it during the festival, you know, they put it. So they start like dressed up and wash for sure, wash themselves first in the holy lake. Come and, you know, dress, put them dress, clean, nice ones, perfumes. Then they goes there to have them stuff and then they go. But that was the library of, you know, the temple. Uh, by the way, uh, ceiling is turned into black as some people believe. They already was like, you know, there is a big fire happening in the temple. Some other believers already, you know, this, they're trying, you know, to, uh, like some people used to spend them overnight here by the fire. They made it change the ceiling and to be, to became a black. But anyway, now they will start to also remove the layers to show off. By the way, you will see some of the colors, but anyway, see uh, more colors will appear because the work starting. But if you look, as we said, remains of the original color because I've been covered with a layer of smoke. And in this hall contains a, a very important scenes, which is already how they erect the temples in ancient time. From the beginning of the choosing the land, you know, like if we like we walk around and you could oh, like sorry. a little, sorry, I'm sorry. So a little bit of it around you here on this side as well. But we will, uh, you know, it's uh, more of it out, you know, over, you know, on the other side. But let's see, uh, you know, here when they start like, they start to put the roof around, I mean, let's see, how they build the temple in ancient time. It goes like, I'm gonna build the temple right here. No, do you have to choose like a place first? Who's selecting the place? A beautiful goddess, her name is Seashat. Seashat, Seashat, she also, she's already even look here, she's wearing animal skin and she seems what? She's doing the work of the high priest. Cause she's the one gonna choose the location of the temple. The woman with the stick, with the you know star at the top or some people said it's going to like the similar that to the palm tree but it's a anyway it's a star is not a palm tree but you know some people said palm tree you know she started to you know helping the pharaoh for you know choosing the location of the temple why she's goddess of mathematics and the landscape and you know that's why she's helping the pharaoh choosing the place then after that they have the pharaoh has to surround you know, that was blue, like put robes around to say, okay, now this is the size of the temple, you know. Then they start to clean that by putting natural salt. The natural salt, you know, 
uh, do you know we still have this uh, ideas in Egypt? Why, why the, why this, why, why the salt? Uh, do you know uh, we still do this in Egypt? When you felt uh, I'm not feeling well in this apartment, or I'm not. So they said, okay, go ahead, wash it by salt, because that will push the bad spirits away. You imagine also the same thing they have done it in ancient time. They start put that salt to push the bad spirits away. You know, left it for a few days. After that. You start to put like the first, uh, the Pharaoh comes to put the first, you know, block. Same celebration as all of the presidents, you know, and kings nowadays. You know, whenever they go for a, for a project structure, he goes to put the first block, you know, same idea. So we can look at this quickly on the other side. We're not uh, wasting our time here, but, you know, the, the internal water. We rise up out of it, from it, the planets. After that, it comes, you know, the holy symbols. After that will comes, you know, the upper and lower Egypt, then the Pharaoh himself, you know. Then sometimes the lay symbol of the commoners is called Rechit in hieroglyphics. Okay? So guys, uh, look how they start to put the natural soul. See? I mean, it starts around the temple, is the rope, you see that design of the rope. Then, you know, put the natural salt. Palm, okay. The capital of the column here, now guys, we are in Ptolemy Temple. Okay? In ancient Egyptian temple, okay, I mean that during the Greek Roman time, they're erecting temples on the top of ancient temples. But the idea is they go for a different design of the capital of the columns. The capital of the columns in the ancient time will be between two things: papyrus or lotus. Whatever blows the flower or open flower, papyrus and lotus. But during the Ptolemy time, they got an, another idea to make kind of something of mixture. Not just papyrus and lotus, papyrus and lotus, and in some cases they put the reeds of the palm trees as well. That's why some people, when they look at the design of the column here, they said, "Oh, that seems like the Corinth style, Greek Roman style." But no, it's Egyptian style because you see what lotus flower, papyrus, and you know that's papyrus plus one. I mean that's mixed between papyrus and lotus. <coughs> here, the palm trees, which is already Egyptian. Okay, because as you've seen how many palm trees that we do have it. So in ancient times we have palm trees, but not big huge trees because as we mentioned, Egypt in ancient time, mostly desert doesn't have a lot of uh, you know trees. But you know we used to have, we have palm trees. That's why they decided to do kind of mixture between the palm trees and you know and you know the uh, papyrus and lotus. That's why it's still 100% Egyptian style. Okay. But they do a mixture, the best beautiful capital of Coulombs, Philae Temple in Aswan. Uh, this, I love it, designs are amazing there for how they make that beautiful mix between all of the Egyptian symbols in one capital of Okay, some people ask, okay, we've been in the hypostyle hall, then comes here another hypostyle hall. We said the temple started from inside to outside guys, to make a space for people to cross. Okay. Uh, you know, um, that's why, you know, as we mentioned, the temple from inside is started by Ptolemy III. Okay, then it start again, you know, Ptolemy the sex, then, you know, the, the fifth and the sixth, so then the fourth, you know, fourth, fifth, sixth, then unless outer wall, the last pylon, the first pylon we seen is number 12 from the Ptolemies, that's why it started by 200, 
37 base until 57 outside base 180 years built in the temple. That's why, just the reason why so he built Taipu style hall. Then comes another one. I want to add something in that beautiful temple. Okay, another Taipu style hall, you know. That's why I told him here different than the one outside. Okay, as we step inside, over. So now here is with the, the fourth and the third. So if you move inside, there will be the third. Same idea here, you get the mist, same scenes of erecting the temple. Of erecting the temple. As you will see, here the Pharaoh start to come. But here, you know, with the lower crown at the beginning. Then the high priest, you see, is wearing the animal skin. He start to burning the incense, you know, to prepare the Pharaoh for that ritual erecting temple. He has to be cleaned. So they wash him, put perfumes burning incense around him to push the bad spirits away then he lead it by the goddess Hathor to present him to her husband you know Horus to start to erecting the temple here with the goddess Sishat and Horus is watching this so put you know the natrum soul hold it look let's see guys the bricks so the blocks of the temple seen that so the blocks of the temple okay yeah so as we said, this is like steps of how we are erecting the temples or choosing the temple unless we start to, you know, get the temple as a gift for the God, you know, at the end. Uh, we have a small room there. Uh, <laughs> By the way, uh, uh, do you know, uh, so when we go to Aswan, we are going to see the uh, most important thing there, the essential oils or the aromatherapy oil or the medical oil or even perfume and incense. Uh, by the way, ancient Egyptian, we were very smart to squeeze flowers, to put oil out of those flowers, use it to be like essential oils and perfumes. Uh, we spend a long time, we have no ideas about those kinds of oils. We don't know how we make it, from which flowers, what is used them for. Yeah, nobody knows, unless inside that small room right here. This room, guys, right here. Okay, inside this room, we find, and we know how we read the hieroglyphics. Inside this room, we find the priestess, they write down every single thing about this kinds of essential oils so how you could make it from which flowers how you could mix it what is used and for how long it takes to work you know every single thing is being written inside you know that room here that's why after that now we have factories creating this kind of essential oils in Aswan most famous famous family they work in that industry is uh, do you know Princess Diana okay her boyfriend was uh, Egyptian, Dudi El Fayed. So the family of El Fayed, they are the most important people in that industry. Do you know a funny thing? We saw you buy the international essence. If you give yourself a chance to look what it's consisted of, you will find the right down on the bottle, 10 to 12% pure essence and the rest is alcoholic and chemicals. What the pure essence is, is the essential oils where they got it from al -Faidi. That's why for us as an Egyptian, our perfumes doesn't have any names on it. It's a normal bottle, you know, why? Because I think it doesn't make sense for me. I have the pure oil, then I pay for the fancy bottle and the trademark, it's so Dolce Gabbana, you know, Jamal or whatever. And I pay so much money for it. No, I can have the pure oil and then for, as I want it, put, you know, alcohol or put water, mix it lower, you know, or keep it as it is. So that's why now you can have a quick look, you know, into the room. <coughs> why you see, you know, the right road down, you know, uh, like quick. You know, for making the essential oils, the perfumes, you know, and they wrote down on the walls like how you could do it, how you could mix it up. So, and the different type of the essential oils is written around you on the walls. Here, yeah. oh, the whole thing, the whole room is ready for the essential oils.
Yes. Because already that was covered, and that's the reason why it's preserved. Yeah. It's a great example for already how what is the temple. Um, so, by the way, uh, just kidding, uh, just kidding. You uh, would love to be connected to the Wi Fi? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> statue and everything. As we mentioned before, Holy of the Holies allowed for only one person is the only one that being allowed to step into the Holy of the Holies. Who? The Pharaoh himself. Is the only one can step inside that Holy of Holies to pray and clean the statue of the God, put, you know, essential oils and incense then put it, hide it inside the shrine, then put the shrine over the holy part. Then the priests, they start to come to carry the holy part over the shoulders and they start the celebration. And the ceremony moving from spot to spot unless they go outside the temple for the commoners or the local people. Okay? Then they go back in the same time. That's why, as we mentioned, used to have a places we call it the rest houses of the holy part. of different rooms, one, two, three, four. Okay, there would be like almost like 12 rooms around, you know, here to put the offers, you know, in order. Different, you know, here that's gonna be for wheat, that's gonna be for like a meat, that's one for like chicken, that's for essential oil, this, you know, like they never put everything together, even, you know, that's why they kept the offers around, you know, that's the so the rooms use them as a storage. It's around the Holy of the Holies, but as we mentioned, who can step inside the Holy of the Holies, just the field itself, you know, And Ra. So it comes here, you have the sun to get to recharge his energy. Recharging his energy, so golden statue, we put it in the sun, gets a lot of power and energy from the sun, recharging the energy of the statue of the god, you know, from the god Ra, god of protection. Okay? That's why that's a special shrine to make the or recharging the power of the god Horus from, you know, the main god of the country, the sun god Ra. Okay? So if you want to go up, uh, there is like some scenes of Horus and uh, you know, the Pharaoh as well. So if you can do some of Horus. Amazing fight between Horus and his uncle Set. <clears throat> so 
So, uh, as you mentioned, the temple is well preserved. The temple, that's why it gives you a, an idea for every single part of the temple. So, the temple has walls to surround, decorated by scenes, victories of the pharaohs. As we said, no TV back in ancient time. There is no TV. So, how can I, like, if I'm the pharaoh, how can I show my propaganda? Outer walls. Because locals, they cannot they step inside the temple, but they could see the outer walls. See, oh, the Pharaoh here beats the enemies, and here fighting, here killing, you know, and it's hunting. That's why it shows that kind of propaganda of the Pharaoh himself. That's why mostly outer walls is not still standing, but that temple, well, the reserved temple, used to be covered. That's why even the part of the mud wall outside the second layer of defense of the temple is still standing. That's why now we are able to explore the outer walls as well. That's why this the reason that's amazing temple of Allah because well preserved it, give us more to see, you know, of what is the temples already consisted of. So now we get the idea, the pylon, open courtyard, the hypostyle hall, the holy of holies, rooms around to keep the offers outer wall and then another mud another wall made out of mud you know that's why now we're gonna explore like some of the outer wall scenes uh, and i'm gonna like uh, teach you some uh, ancient numbers okay yes and i do a little uh, quiz and so, see who's gonna win <laughs> some of them are like the face. The face. Okay. The face. Yeah. Okay. Why? Because that's during when Christianity became the main religion for the Roman Empire. There is two temples, or main like main two temples. They have to destroy them a lot. Why? Uh, people they still keep worshiping them as a different idea. They use them as a church here to walk. Yes. Out, which is the main you know. That's why, as we said, they find Egyptian they find the same concept of Virgin Mary, the same idea of goddess Isis. S idea of Jesus Christ, the same idea of the god Horus. That's why imagine some people come here worshipping Horus as Jesus Christ himself. So for sure, the, peer, the Christians, you want to tell, okay, no, that's a different religion. That's why, you know, the last temple services stop in it all over Egypt. Philae temple for the goddess Isis, that's even 528 AD service stays in that temple. Why? Still worshipping Isis as Virgin Mary herself. That's why this is the most, like, happen a lot of defacing. <laughs> you know, you start to deface, like, to say, this is not a real god, they're different, that's a different religion. And because <coughs> most, sorry, most of the ancient temple already is used as a church. That's why, you know, I cannot like, as we will see that in the uh, in temple, I cannot pray and open my eyes, see here Horus, Osiris, you know, Seth, and you know, and, like, that's why they decided to visit all this. So, <laughs> you will have... So you will have noticed wherever we've been, like even at Medinat Habu, faces have been scratched out. So both Muslims who forbid even pictures of animals and faces have done it. Usually when the Christians have done it, it's only when they've used the place as a church. And if you look carefully sometimes, you'll see that they put their little Coptic cross. So that's always a sign that the Christians did it. Um, and you'll see a couple of those at the uh, Philae Temple. But in Islam, you may have seen it in the Museum of Civilization, there was uh, the history of Islam in Egypt, and they tend to use lots of geometric shapes, etc. But animals, depiction of animals, humans, living things like that are uh, strictly forbidden. So both have done it. 
But down in this later period, Ptolemaic, obviously, um, once the Romans came in, Christianity spread, and then they started to use a couple of places like this as churches. And so you, you don't, as, you're quite right, you wouldn't want to be praying to, to Jesus and turn around and see pictures of Horus and whatever here as well. Uh, Thanks, guys, Derek. you are welcome to So guys, uh, down here there is used to be Nilo Mater. Nilo Most of the reserved Nilo Mater all over Egypt. Next visit Komombu Temple. Uh, what the Nilo Mater using for? Using to measure the flood of the Nile River. Why do you want to measure the flood of the Nile River? For two things. Two things. First one planning for the agriculture because i don't know like how much water are coming or you know that's why for sure as how much water that you put the plan for which crops will be you know fair for that level of water second as he said hiring the tax because the hiring tax but you want to be fair so how it could be fair most of you know idea in ancient time no money Money exists during the Greek Roman time, but idea is trade. Trade, you have to have stuff. Mostly trade goes with like crops and uh, you know, wheat and stuff. That's why, you know, you want to hire in tax, but you want to be fair. That's why they start to measure the flood of the Nile River. That helps them for hiring the tax. So that was it, where they measured it? Yes, the, the entrance is down here, but oh, it's so not deeper. deeper. Yeah, go cool. deeper from the side. That was the line of meter. We will see, as we mentioned, the most of the reserve is one. We will see the same. That is Jackal. Not Talk. No, it's not Jackal. Oh. Let's pull the glass. Wow. Glass and hiring metrics means, you know, power. So it's not a symbol of any of the animals. No, it's a. Uh, uh, it's like a bit similar, like you know, uh, like a bit like a donkey, which is really an image of one like Set, Set right. himself. Because Set, okay, some people said evil, but I think there is no God for evils. The idea is, he's the sneaky one. He knows the sneaky ways. That's why you know, he's like he's the only one can beat. Uh, guys, come here. Uh, look at that uh, amazing scene. Do you know who is that person with the two feathers open the head, holding a papyrus roll, wearing the animal skin as a high priest? Uh, his name is here, Imhotep. Imhotep. Uh, Imhotep. Yes. The message of erecting Itfu temple in this place comes with the magic of, so, uh, sorry, the message of, this is the actual location of control the evils where Horus and he made his victory you know that's why he comes even what is written that Imhotep behind him who come in peace okay uh, that's why because of that scene some people because Imhotep he was like an alien so let's see his his Imhotep here was the two uh, antennas you know <laughs> But the idea, Imhotep, as we said, he was a sign of the ancient history. That's why he keep appear, they, uh, they use his name, they use his, you know, image more than one time, you know, because he's a sign of the history, he's a founder of a lot of things, very smart guy, you know. That's why this, the scene of Imhotep, comes to read the message come from, came from the heavens for erecting Edfu Temple. Make a point here. We're going to see more later on at Komombo. But you're in a, a Greek temple, right? So 1,500 years after what you saw at Saqqara, and they're venerating Imhotep. Are they going to do that to a Hebrew? If he's Joseph, as many people often say, yeah. those in Christian circles, Joseph is Imhotep. Yeah, no, there is uh, your evidence he's that he's not. He's not. There's no way Egyptians would venerate throughout history a foreigner and a Hebrew. Yeah, no, no uh, way. Third dynasty, then here is Ptolemaic time, then later on Komambu, you know, Roman time. I think, yeah, then they're gonna happen with 
non-Egyptian. I ask these guys, it's one of the most common things they hear when tourists come, Joseph being in a hotel, so that's why I make a point of saying that. Yeah. <laughs> Question. Yes. Question. There's a full face frontal. Uh, give two sounds of, anyway, hieroglyphics as we mentioned, symbols. Give sound, one letter, two letters, three letters, four letters, okay. Quick example, the mouth is going to be letter R, one letter. Hand, one letter. That's okay. That's, uh, you know, D, letter D, okay? That gives sound two letters, SH, okay? So, um, this one letter, N, okay? That's why that's good. With one letter, two letters, that, that's her, her, her. So, that's H, H, R, okay? Two letters, I mean, so one symbol, but give two letters. That's why, you know, hieroglyphics is not uh, alphabetic as more as its symbols give sound. How about this Here, one? that's me, M, I, okay? That is already, uh, you know, that's a part of like all the Nehah, which is already is uh, eternity, you know? Inter yeah, but eternity not for uh, for place, eternity for timing, because we have two different eternal time, eternal place, eternity for timing, eternity for the place. Okay. Ancient numbers and ancient time. Yes. Um, in Europe, uh, or Europeans, yes. few of us are beautiful, and those that are, are it's, it's transient, we grow out of it. All of the simple people here, God's people, whatever, they're all beautiful. Yes. What, what, what's the reason behind that? <laughs> Is it because they made them so beautiful? Or, yeah. or were they natural? Uh, for, sure, for sure, you know, yeah. you cannot make the God look ugly. Even I think if you make the fearful not good, I think maybe they're going to be the last thing you give. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why there's the reason. Uh, only one became a bit honest for the art is Akhenaten. Because he's, you know, Firu talking about religion. That's why he was more, you know, religious. That's why he shows that he has a big belly, and, you know, long face, thin face. Most of Pharaohs, he looks like working out, muscles, blood fat. For sure, not all of them like this, but you know, that's like the arts and work that they have to make the Pharaoh look perfect. Because I think if make something else, maybe it's going to be the last thing. Okay? Uh, guys, now I'm going to show you numbers, 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 ancient numbers. We see, we read some hieroglyphics together. Now quickly, let's look at some of the ancient numbers. How I can say one? Okay, one. Dash. Dash is one. Okay, two. Two dashes. Three. Three dashes. Okay. Till nine would be nine dashes. But let's see. How I could say ten? Ten. That's like the horseshoe, 10, okay? That means here, one, two, three, four, that means? Four, great. How I can say 100? Add, Diva. Add, Diva. Which one did they point to? Excuse me, guys, please. the best guy to me. Enjoy with him. Not that much. That's 100. Which one? Here. So there's 240. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and you can, can you tell what this is? 105? Oh. No. 103. Oh, no, the horseshoe is 10. 113. 113. Okay. <laughs> 113. Okay. Now you see. Okay, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, so 90. Okay, so guys, now you start learning a bit about the 
ancient numbers. How I can see thousand lotus flower, thousand. How I can see ten thousand pointed finger. How I can see hundred thousand frog. How I can see million. Happy guy with a feather <laughs> over the head because he became a millionaire. That's why they now see million. Is that true? Or that yeah, no, 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 that's true. Do you know, like, not long ago, so when we get someone is uh, like rich and power, so people, and he is trying to act, and people like, why you act like this? Do you have a, a, a feather open your head? And we don't know from where that, but we find that means like that he's a millionaire in ancient time. That's a symbol of a million. That's why he's a millionaire. So right now, so, <laughs> so we speak about, so now we get the numbers in ancient time. So you learn some hieroglyphics, you learn numbers. Okay, now get back to our, you know, explanation, the fighting between Horus and Set. Set. Set is he's an evil god, he's you know very strong, he's you know the bad one, he knows the sneaky ways. That's why he could turn himself into some scenes already destroying, like Hippopotamus. But the crocodile will attack you just hungry, but hippopotamus attack you for no reasons. That's why now you start see watching, you know, Horus was the pharaoh already, but also comes to help him for that, you know, fighting the hippopotamus, which is now here symbol for, you know, the set himself, the god set himself. But the fight was way very strong. You see here when his turn it upside down yeah, like what, then, huh? then gets back standing again that's why you know the fight as we mentioned was way very strong that's why during that fight he lost one of his eyes as we mentioned the left eye became symbol of you know uh, you know uh, like wash the even eyes away or keep it so big eyes you see it's turn it upside down here one more time you see how they try to show the fight was really strong he started to go try to you know put ropes to you know control him and try to control him turn it upside down and pushing the ropes away you know it's standing back again you know that's why that's just idea you know the fight was way way very strong fight. fighting here Horus the okay. God of Protection fighting his uncle Seth. Ah, right, okay. Okay? So you think they made the hippo a little bit bigger to make sure they fight? Uh, okay. <laughs> He's so small. Is that, yeah, is that enough size? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. Is, is that enough size? Or more bigger? Hippo is always bigger than a human. Yes, but you know, the idea here, you want to show off Horus because this is macho man. yes because already here this is my place here where i already get way to control you know the evils and the idea of set so he didn't kill him by the way why because already by the way uh, okay set is you know crazy he knows about the bad ways and we still need him through the journey in the underworld one of the most hard thing you know abu fis that's why like the snake was was the more than head, you know. Nobody, even the gods, is still scared from him because he's sneaky and knows doing bad things. Only one that Abu Fis scared from him, Set. That's why you see when so Abu Fis appears, who comes at the beginning of the solar boat of the god Ra, Set. Because he knows that he will scare, because Abu Fis knows that Set he knows all of the bad stuff and the sneaky wise. That's why he's gonna beat him. That's why he's just try to escape from Seth. That's why here you see they didn't kill him as they just controlling him. Guys, look how they tighten. You know the legs was the ropes. 
and just put the control and Horus show up the victory of the controlling. Because some people said here where they killed Seth. No, he didn't kill Seth. He's just controlling him. He put him under the control, you know. Now it means, so Horus save, you know, the earth from the evils and he knows how to control the evils with the symbol here or the bad. Because the symbol here is, you know, the God set himself. So they didn't have like inside just infill, it was bricks, solid bricks yeah. all the way through. Yeah. Is this yeah. the mud brick as well? This is mud brick, yeah. This is probably after though, this is not re this is more recent. More recent. Yeah. So up there might be original. Yep. Be the houses that the priests lived in. Remember, he talked about that. Yes. Some of them stone. Yeah. When you drive back, when we go along the outside, have a look at the bottom, and you'll see pottery and oh. all sorts of stuff lying there too.